Yo, what is up, my Nakama? So my name is Daniel, and I'm a current first year medical student. And as highly requested in the comments section, I will now be doing my reaction to Cells at Work, episode two. And I'm really excited and can't wait to see what this anime is gonna throw at me um, in this new episode. Uh, but before I start, I just wanna give a huge thank you to all the healthcare workers who are currently at the hospital, risking their lives and protecting people with the coronavirus. Um, I think that this is just a selfless and amazing act that they're doing. Even though it is part of their job, they are still risking their lives going out there and treating patients. I'm just kind of making these videos as a small source of positivity during these kind of bleak times. And I hope you enjoy watching this and I hope this incentivizes you to just relax and stay at home because that's kind of the best thing that we can do in order to ease the burden on the hospital systems. So anyways, without further ado, time to get into Cells at Work, episode two. <laughs> the Nubococcus. I love the platelets. I wonder if her senpai is like a uh, mature red blood cell. Close to the end of its life cycle or something. So it knows where to go. <laughs> <laughs> the platelets again. <laughs> I hope my platelets are this cute. <laughs> Not for long, I bet. <laughs> the Raku! <laughs> Ooh, scrape wound. I'm guessing the platelets might be involved in this one. What are those? Oh my god, that's amazing. <laughs> that's funny they're washing fibrin. So basically fibrin, it's like the last component of the coagulation cascade. Um, so the very last thing that happens is fibrinogen gets converted to fibrin. And basically it acts as like um, a large meshwork that together with platelets uh, forms like a stable clot. Um, so it was interesting that the platelets, it was they were kind of like washing a giant mesh of a net. So I'm assuming they might be getting ready for some sort of clot or something. <laughs> uh, but that's cool that they depicted it like a like a mesh work, the fibrin. And there we go. <laughs> oh, is that inflammation? Oh my god. Ooh. Kind of looks like when Pain destroyed the Hidden Leaf Village. <laughs> oh, is she gonna go into the outside environment? Is she gonna like bleed out? Oh, she was saved. He's back. Oh no, that's kind of sad. Some of them are just gone now. That's right, the body will replenish it anyways. Oh. Did a foreign substance get in? Oh, just some germs. Oh, that's a lot of germs. 
I wonder if it's just like common skin flora. Oh, Staff Aureus. Oh. Yeah, I mean, Staff Aureus, it does like reside in the skin and pores, but Staff Aureus can be really, really serious, especially if you're immunocompromised. Um, yeah, it can cause like meningitis. It's a common cause of pneumonia. It can cause some like osteomyelitis as well and arthralgias. What is that? <laughs> okay, we got some hands. Ooh. White blood cell going in. Uh, yeah, this is one of the very first thing that happens, uh, vasoconstriction, yeah, as they said. Yeah, so in order to, like, control the amount of blood that's uh, lost or flowing out, it will uh, vasoconstrict near the site of injury. Oh no, more germs are getting in. Streptococcus pyogenes. Okay, so this version of Streptococcus, um, it's a little different than the strep pneumo from the first episode. This is actually the common cause of strep throat, uh, but there can be more severe complications depending on if you experience the symptoms after you've had the uh, bacteria. For example, there's like post-strep glomerulonephritis, and I believe there's also rheumatic fever, which can be caused... Um, after having this bacteria. Uh, but strep pyogenes, it's a pretty common cause of strep throat. Um, you just take antibiotics if um, you are diagnosed with it. And it is a common um, bacteria of the throat. And I think generally what happens is like if you aspirate it or if your immune system is somewhat compromised, um, then that's when you will actually see some symptoms of the infection. But yeah, this is awesome. They're just uh, coming out with all the typical bacteria. So let's see how this goes. <laughs> Pseudomonas! No! Okay, Pseudomonas can be really bad, especially like in a hospital setting. Um, it's funny that they depict Pseudomonas like this because um, it is naturally occurring in like um, aquatic environments. Did they say that? Uh, I guess natural environments, but it is, I believe, termed like hot tub folliculitis. No, hot tub. It's like the hot tub bacteria because that's where it could be found. It could be um, in a source of uh, water requirements. But is it, it, it is referred to as a common nocosomial infection, meaning that it can be spread in hospitals. Um, and it is a very common cause of pneumonia as well, like pneumonia-acquired hospital infection. And it can be pretty bad uh, depending on how bad the infection actually gets. But uh, usually, like, most of these bacteria that, like, exist in your throat or in your oropharynx or on your skin your immune system will just handle it, basically. Uh, so hopefully that's what happens in this episode. But you know, something interesting actually that they said last episode was the white blood cell mentioned that the host, as in like um, the body that they're in, is immunocompromised, I think. So I wonder if the body that they're in has something wrong with it in, in, in general, like some sort of um, genetic anomaly or if the body is just immunocompromised in general. Because I do remember the white blood cell mentioning something about that in the last episode. So I wonder if that'll come into play in the future. Oh no, you can't go through the one-way valve. Yeah, they showed that last episode when she was trying to deliver O2 the wrong way. Oh no! Let's go! White blood cells. <laughs> I love the white blood cells. White blood cells are the first responders. They're super important. Oh no. Destroyed. Oh, who's this guy? Is this like a virulence factor or something? Oh my god. He's going in. 
Ah uh, yes, the classic halfway point in anime. <laughs> Atharak Saibo. Deep abrasion. The staff Arius. What a nasty bacteria. Oh my god, there's a lot of them. Oh, L Selectin. Um, I don't know if I remember everything about that, but I believe it's like an adhesional protein that white blood cells can express in order to like adhere to the endothelial layer um it's i think it's what they use like when they migrate to like different sites in the body so i think he was telling him like keep your l selectin on so that like you stay clinging to the wall and not get like um thrown out as what just happened unfortunately <laughs> That's what you think. <laughs><笑> Hey, they're not scrubs. They're super important. We'll show up eventually. <laughs> it's getting intense. Oh man. マクロファージでも探求でもキラーティーサイボーでもビーサイボーでもない俺たちの強力なスケットを強力をひっくり返すだけの力を持ったプロのことをなおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおお
for energy through your body. So yeah, like having a deep vein thrombosis and then having a pulmonary embolism afterwards can be very dangerous and usually requires like immediate hospitalization or some sort of emergency procedure. So it is good to have clotting um, in some sense in order to like prevent, you know, bacteria from going into the wound in order to prevent um, excessive blood loss, but overclotting can be an issue too. So conversely, in order to deal with like overclotting, there's something called tissue plasminogen activator. And basically that will basically cause like anti-clotting activity. So it'll convert plasminogen to plasmin and kind of lice and cut the clot. Um, TPA, tissue plasminogen activator. Um, I'm wondering if they're gonna introduce that in this episode, but I think they're just focusing on the initial formation of the clot with like platelets and von Willebrand factor and the end product of the coagulation cascade, which is converting fibrinogen to fibrin to form that initial like mesh work you saw that kind of acts as like a band-aid. Your plans have been foiled. <laughs> Called out. Fake friends. <laughs> That's too hype. Straight hands. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> he survived! Oh, he used his, um, L lectin. <laughs> I see a romance happening. <laughs> well, it's not the red blood cell's job to be in, um, the immune system. <laughs> <laughs> They're just like oxygen and nutrient deliverers. They're stuck to the vibrant meshwork. So this is bad. This is how, oh yeah, secondary hemostasis. So the, the first fiber network was primary hemostasis. But you know, too much of the secondary hemostasis, and that can be bad, because you don't want to overclot, as I mentioned before. <laughs> but yeah, this was a, a really awesome episode. Um, it's, I love how the show, it's, it gets everything right and it's very accurate, um, especially like in terms of like how clots form and how the platelets like use clotting factors and like the fibrin meshwork, um, and how there's like certain bacteria that are pretty like normal, like you have normal gut bacteria and you have normal skin flora and bacteria and you have bacteria like living in your mouth and your throat as well. Um, the thing is, is that unless like you're immunocompromised or you somehow, aspirate that bacteria or you develop some sort of like immunoglobulin deficiency um, usually they are going to be like asymptomatic and cause no problems and actually like bacteria in your gut i mean you need that bacteria to survive they carry out a lot of important um, physiologic and biological processes that are necessary for our survival um, and necessary for a lot of like absorption of nutrients and stuff so you know not all bacteria are bad um, some are good. It'll be, it'll be interesting to see if they introduce like any good bacteria, like friends of the human body. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, this episode was awesome. Um, I hope you enjoyed and um, I hope you keep on watching with me as we continue through this series. And as always, Dr. Bayo.